So we are now back here in my studio and um, now I would like to show you how you can do musical editings um, in, in a few steps and only with a few examples and I will show you how to trim the different takes and then how to make a crossfade between the different takes and for this I have opened the material here in the sample editor it's the Samplitude Pro X6 software that I'm using Samplitude or Sequoia are developed by Magix in Germany and they stand for um, up-to-date state-of-the-art um, digital audio editing but of course you can do the same work with other sample editors I work on this software uh, since more than 20 years, so I'm not familiar with many other sample editors. Um, I know that some musicians told me they work with a free tool which is called Audacity, but I don't have it here on my computer and I, I'm not um, going to use it. I'm showing you step by step how you can do the editings and this is similar um, between uh, independently from the from the workstation from the environment that you use so you can see that i have um, made a pre-selection of takes that seemed uh, good to me but uh, now these takes have to be trimmed and then uh, in order to make the transition between the different takes unperceptible you have to work with so-called crossfades. So for the beginning of the piece I'm fading in because it's not nice to start directly with a hard cut. So for that I, I open the object editor and I am looking here for fades. I'm using this fade curve and I define here a fade in of 2000 milliseconds which is nice and you have to make sure so here the cross fade the fade in ends so that's almost perfect you can move it a little bit to the right so that the full signal is there for the beginning of the music <clears throat> and it sounds like this oops there was a wrong note so here I played in the pedal I paid an A flat instead of a B flat so we want to fix this little error now so here is the wrong note I select this take this object I split it here in this um, uh, place where the wrong note starts I delete the wrong part of the take and this is to be the new version Ah, here you can clearly hear that I play the right note so I go with the cursor to this I set the cursor to this point I split I delete the unneeded um, part of the take and then I put those elements together here is a notch button so you can use that and it will immediately um, go to the right place if you don't activate this it's it's more difficult to to put this correctly together so I use this notch button okay now you can hear that there is a click in the transition okay so what we can what we can do about this is open the crossfade window and uh, apply a crossfade to this transition so I get that crossfade I use a preset of one second 
and this particular curve. I will explain you later um, why this matters. Okay, so now you can move the crossfade over this transition and you can also see already that the waveform as from here looks quite similar and also as from here. So make sure that already um, visually it matches more or less and then we will listen how this sounds now. Okay, there is no more click, but you can still hear a rest of an A flat in the pedal. And why? This is because the crossfade covers also this part of the take where the wrong note already uh, appears. So that means that we have to move the crossfade until here, because here, from here on, it's, it's correct. There is the B flat. So, that sounds good. I mean, there is no more wrong note, but the crossfade is not very, it's not very clean. I can still hear that it is not in the perfect place. Still not so nice. I will use a shorter crossfade. There is a, a little window you can see on the right on top where you can see the milliseconds. So we are now at almost 300 milliseconds and then I move the crossfade until the place where the B flat sounds. And that's, that's very nice. You can zoom into this and then you can even see that you can match the position of the new take even more precisely when zooming in. That sounds good to me. Even smaller. Yeah. I give it a more, a little more pre-roll time. Yeah. Musically, that sounds good to my ears. So we are done with this first edit. Okay, there is another little problem. There is a glitch in the manuals. Okay, again, we set the cursor to the position. We split this object, we delete the unneeded material, and here is the new take, which sounds perfect. Again, I place the cursor in the right position, split, delete, put these objects together using this nudge button, and then it's it's already not bad, but you can still hear the little click. So we again use the crossfade. Uh, I get the preset. And as you know, the crossfade has to end before the wrong note starts. So this is not the good position. You have to move it. That's already not bad, but for me it's a little bit too long and I'm now trimming the crossfade. That sounds perfect. Let's zoom in a little bit more so that we can see that it matches. Okay, that way it does. Perfect. Now, I I explained that um, you have to use this particular curve. Um, you can also uh, choose linear mode for some other um, uh, situations, logarithmical, cosine, sine mode. But um, as you use linear curves uh, for a crossfade, you will hear that it doesn't sound satisfying. 
there is a kind of a little decrescendo over the crossfade. It gets uh, softer just a little bit, but, but you can hear that. Okay, so um, another extreme uh, would be to use the exponential curve, but at a higher value, let's say like that, just for instance, and then you will hear what happens. Yeah, it makes a little crescendo over the crossfade. Anyway, it doesn't sound natural. To be more drastical, I will do it like that. Okay, so um, the best result you get when you set this value to 70 and in other environments this is also known as the equal power mode. I have seen that on other workstations they call it the equal power mode. This gives the best result. Good. Okay, I decided that I want to make another edit here on the G. No, on the D, sorry. Um, um, I remove this. I put these takes together. I can still hear the little click. I, I open the crossfade window. I get my preset. I know that I have to move this and I can see that it doesn't match here perfectly. I zoom in and I already adjust uh, the position of the next, the take after the cut so that it matches with the previous one. And then I reduce the length of the crossfade and let's see how it sounds. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yes. Again, I can show you what would be the difference if you use a linear curve. It doesn't sound natural, so we go back to 70 for fade in and for the fade out. All right. Okay, I have decided that the next edit point should be here. I split this. And here again, I split, I delete this unwanted material and we check the transition. And again, I open the crossfade window, I fetch my preset and I, I check the position, seems not bad. And now, as I want to start with a new take from here, I move the crossfade to the left. Now it's a little bit long, so I will shorten that. It sounds a little bit rushed, so maybe this has to start later. That sounds perfect. To give you an example, if you really um, uh, uh, have uh, uh, start with the new take um, too early timing-wise, you will maybe not hear a click or something else, but you will hear that timing-wise it doesn't work. It sounds like if I were playing a, a 60 note instead of an 8 note. So um, you don't hear a click. It could be like that, but it's clearly not in the right position. 
So I make an undo. That's it. So there is on the F going to be the next cut. Okay. I remove this bad material. I put the takes together. Okay, here you can hear that the timing is not perfect. It starts too late. So I have to trim that. So timing wise it sounds good to my ears, but there's still this click. So I get my, um, my crossfade. I get the preset and then I can already see that the position is not bad at all. This matches best visually. Okay, uh, I adjust the crossfade length. I move it a little bit and let's see how it sounds. No, it's not perfect because I can hear a little let's say, phasing effect over this crossfade. It's not perfect. So I'm going to move this maybe like that. Let's try. Still something not, not perfect. Maybe like this. And I can move. Aha! As you can hear, it's sometimes recommended to move the crossfade over uh, a heavy beat in in the music, uh, provided there is no mistake on this on this beat. But uh, it, it it's more, it's less perceptible now. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. Yeah, that was there's a there's a little glitch. Okay, split, remove. Okay, this crossfade could be a challenge because uh, there is a note in the paddle that continues over several bars and that's always heavy to, to edit. So if possible, you should evo um, avoid to edit over these uh, um, long notes because it can be difficult, can be problematic, but let's see. Timing was not good. I trim this. Still a little bit rushed. That's better. I again open my crossfade window. I get my preset. And as there is this note in the paddle, which is held over several bars, I recommend to use a longer crossfade time. It's not bad, but you can hear the glitch is there. So the crossfade has to be finished by that point. Yeah, that's it.
Okay, let's say you just want a minute of music of this Bach. Then when you have done your musical editings, you open the object um, editor and then set a fade out, let's say five seconds and then So we are done with this. Um, we have seen now um, one, two, three, four, five, six crossfades, and um, these are the um, the basic steps when uh, making um, musical editing when doing musical editing. Um, you have seen how to open the crossfade window and how to trim the takes and how to adjust the crossfades to change the length of the crossfades, the position of the crossfades. So the rest is just um, uh, trial on error and then uh, you have to uh, get a lot of practice in, in doing this. And then uh, you will become more uh, familiar with, with this. Um, there's another interesting thing maybe if you want to save this um, uh, this one minute ten seconds of music as a new stereo file you can uh, export or track bounce this um, in as a new wave project and these settings depend on your uh, original uh, material. So we have recorded all this in 24-bit word length and in 48,000 hertz. And um, okay, you can track bounce that and you, you give that another name in, in your folder and I call this demo editing crossfades dot wave. Okay, and then it creates a new wave file and this wave file doesn't show any more these edit points and it just sounds in one file. And then you take this wave file and you put this in the timeline in your video, video editor and you adjust the music, the, um, the wave file to uh, the sound of your video recorder and then you can replace the the um, track the soundtrack of your video file with the new audio file so that's the essential thing to know okay that's about crossfading <laughs>